Hey folks, I'm doing a quick and dirty video here for you. This is about uh, Peprium or Paprium. I don't know how you pronounce it. I'm not French, but it is the new homebrew Genesis game that uh, has been years in the making. As you can see, my package came here from the Magical Game Factory dot com distribution center in Las Vegas. So I am gonna open this up and uh, we'll see what we got inside. Okay, you'll have to excuse my sloppy camera work here. Um, I cannot find the tripod which shows you how long it's been since I've done anything like this. But that's okay, because we're gonna see this together. So people were asking if anyone in the States has gotten their copy yet. So the answer is obviously yes. Uh, made in China, watermelon logo on it. Little ding on the box here, but uh, I would be kind of surprised if there wasn't, honestly. Oh, actually, that's cool. You see this? There's like a WM cut into the box. Um, the reason I say that about, I would be surprised if there wasn't damage is because the mail in San Francisco seems to get kicked around a lot. That's where I'm at, by the way, if you're trying to do the math in your head by how close I am to Las Vegas. Um, geographically speaking, pretty close, but I've also heard that someone in Wisconsin got theirs. So, you know, maybe it's uh, not a good indicator of how long it'll take. Everything's backed up because of the uh, holidays and as you can see it came from USPS but it was priority mail so you know interestingly enough the website the magical game factory website thing that's supposed to tell you how uh, your the status of your shipping mine still just says shipping as opposed to ship that I never got like a tracking number so it actually arrived here before the tracking updated so whatever all right here we go this is it. This is Pepperio. Yep, there it is. I got the Sega Genesis styled one because uh, I have a Sega Genesis. I don't have a Mega Drive. It's actually a Sega Genesis 32X CD or whatever that combo is called. Um, here's a little doohickey here. This is um, talking about, it's, this is kind of an errata, like an update to the manual. There were some things that have changed since they made the manual, not shocked. Um, written by the remaining founder of the company, uh, Gwenael Fonzi Gode. Trust me, I don't know anything about French and I'm quite sure I pronounced that wrong. So anyway, um, you know, says to use a CRT, do it as 90s as possible, oops. Do it as 90s as possible. If you ordered the grand stick, that's the joystick and a mega wire, I recommend you unpack them after your first plane play for longer, blah, blah, blah. So the grand stick I know about, the mega wire I guess is the little dongle thingy to grant some kind of modem to the game. I don't know if that's for like updating the software or for like, I don't know, some kind of online play or something. Not sure. Anyway, there's all this stuff about what you should do. Um, but here's the, the parts that are actually interesting. This is the uh, things that are updated and you have to go in and fix this in the manual in your head. Um, Somebody, when they ran out of money at some point, uh, somebody squatted on their domain name. That's pretty crappy. Um, anyway, it's just a little thing. It's not actually part of the book, but it's inside. So let's uh, take a look at the actual game. So it comes in a little plastic like 
thing for hanging at a store, even though there's no way this is ever going to be in a retail store, I don't think. But um, really good quality. The box looks very nice. Pretty impressed with the print quality. As someone who's done printing of uh, comics, I can tell you it's very hard to get good printing that doesn't cost a lot of money. Huh, here's something that wouldn't have passed the uh, the Sega standards and practices or whatever back in the 90s. Fuck you, spray painted on the back of it. Uh, for play and use with NTSC Sega Genesis system, not licensed or sponsored by the Sega Corporation. I wonder if they really did trademarks. Would you look at that? I'm trying to get it to focus close here. I don't know if you can read this or not, but copyright 2017 to 2018. So, yeah, it definitely looks like they really were planning on having it come out sooner than it did. But uh, they did an excellent job of aping the Genesis style. Um, but that's cool. In the year 8... A2, planet Earth is set to ashes. Survivors of the nuclear winter gathered at the equidistant point of the now ruins Pyongyang, Tokyo, and Shanghai. Shanghai, however you say that. The city's name is Paprium. Fight your way through the streets of Paprium with Tug, Alex, and Dice. Redefine the word justice. Overcome your addiction to the street drug blue. And most importantly, stay alive. AAA Brawler Gameplay. State-of-the-art 16-bit graphics. Epic sound effects and BGM soundtrack. Huge 80 meg cartridge built in save mechanism. Sega CD optional features. So that's cool. I've heard that's something to do with AI partners or something. And uh, it just so happens that I have a Sega CD, so we can maybe check that out, I think. Let's just uh, open this little seal thingy. Boy, they don't want you to open this damn thing, do they? Maybe I will just get it with the scissors. Um, as you can see, I did not get the Super Deluxe Founders Edition thingy. Um, I pre-ordered it in, I don't know, was that 2017 or something? When they had the commercial, the video of with the bodybuilder guy that's when i first heard about it and when it sold me um and this tape stuff is you'll certainly know if this is sealed or not jeez come on oh that's ridiculous This is just cardboard, but it's nice. Looks like uh, I got a signature, and uh, I am number 1,197 out of 1,989. What? That doesn't add up. Or maybe that's fake because 1989. Maybe that's what that is about. Okay. So this is pretty cool. This has definitely got a very uh, like late 80s anime kind of a thing going on. The little pill thing is, oh, it <laughs> the cartridge comes in a pill thing. Uh, it has a very Akira thing going on. That's funny, it comes in a like a pill container. I like it. Um, so yeah, mine's purple. Uh, I guess the founders had like one color and the pre-orders had another color and then like the regular people who are getting it later are gonna have just like a normal black Genesis cartridge. Um, I wouldn't have paid more for a different color cartridge, but I like the purple. I don't think I have any purple Genesis cartridges. I think mine are all just plain black. But, um, looks nice. Here's the little um, port on the top for the Megawire thing. Um, 
yeah. This is definitely a new mold. It's got the WM watermelon embossed on it and like some weird fake vents over here. Avoid exposing cartridge, blah, blah, blah. Um, so some people, there's, I guess, a metal plate, like an aluminum plate over the uh, custom chips inside of it. And some people, that plate like came out and was flopping around. Doesn't seem to be the case on mine. Maybe it's only the founder people that have that and the people who pre-ordered at the normal time like me don't have that issue. Um, so I, what I'm trying to figure out is, are you supposed to put this in a regular plastic Genesis box? Like, is that the idea? Or is it just you have a cardboard thing? Um, so let's see what's in here. Is this the manual? Oh, it like folds out. Got it. Okay. Day 10 Meister shot respect. In this cartridge, the DT128M16VA1LT Dayton Meister Semiconductor Genesis. I like the YOLO. The fake graffiti on the stuff is pretty fun. Um, so what does it go like? Yeah, it folds it up like this. This is really elaborate. I don't, like I say, if, if you haven't ever tried to print anything, you may not realize how much effort is involved in making something look this good, but trust me. This is nice. So, what is this a? I think this might be a poster. Got some stickers. Good looking stickers. <laughs> you can definitely tell that the people who made this game English was not their first language. I like this ad for a fake Genesis game, or a fake 32X game actually. That's like even cooler. I wish that was real. I would totally play a new 32X game. Here's the ad for the joystick, the Grand Stick, which does look like a nice joystick, but that's just... I don't have space for more joysticks. Uh, in Papri, winners do drugs. Oh, okay. In real life, say no to drugs. I like how they've got the, the fake anti-drug ad. Oh, it's like a postcard. Press ah, that's cool. All right, so what do we got here? Just the instruction manual. Okay, and that's cool. Looks nice. Very good printing all around. Now, one thing I don't get is I definitely um, ordered the comic book with it. So I wonder if the comic book is being shipped separately. They were listed as different shipments on the Magical Game Factory website. So, I mean, I guess that must be the situation, but um, I'm kind of surprised that they didn't put them in the same shipping box. Oh, well, I guess I'll just have to wait for that to show up later. I, I think the founder people, it was in one combined, uh, one combined package, but uh, let's take a look here at this poster. Printing quality on this is also very nice. Okay, here it is. Paprium. Cool art, cool poster, good printing. Oh, and on the back it's like a map. That's cool. Very nice. They did a really good job with this. I know a lot of people online were like, who cares about the packaging? Just make it a good game. Well, you know what? I just want to say that they did a really good job on the packaging and the manual and the stickers and the poster. Like, everything is really nice. Um, I guess what I need to do is get a one of those, a spare one of those clamshell Genesis boxes and put this in there. I think that's what you're meant to do. Um, or, I don't know, I mean the later Genesis games just came in cardboard boxes, like I have um, 32X games with just the cardboard box, I have like Virtua Racing like that, but um, yeah, I don't know, it seems like it should go in the plastic thing, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Uh, anyway, let's try the actual game. Okay, 
here we are. Uh, I am playing it on a CRT. This is my Sony Trinitron, P Trinitron PVM. It's a professional video monitor. It's not huge, but it is high quality. Uh, I'm going to be sticking it in here in my little tower of power. Well, little is probably the wrong word. Enormous tower of power. This is my Sega Genesis Model 2 with the crystal clear audio mod. Uh, 32X and Sega CD Model 2. 32X is modded for S video, but I'm using RGB now, so it doesn't matter. Um, here's the paprium. Woo. I'm gonna stick that cart right in, and we'll see if there's any issues running it on a 32X. I don't know if anyone has stuck it in a 32X so far, but let's find out. Uh, please ignore the drive seeking noises you may hear in the bathroom background. That's not my Sega CD, that is my computer trying to restore a damaged disc. Uh, okay, so disregard previous messages. Oh, you know what? I think the sound might be turned off. Yeah, okay, here we go. Some kind of memory test or something. Pick your language. Well, that's interesting. Uh, English, of course. Do not switch off saving. Okay, so I've heard about this. Apparently you get a fake 8-bit game to start with. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Let me hear about this sound. Is there supposed to be sound? What's going on here? I may be having a sound problem with my system. Um... Give me a second here. I think I may have some cables unplugged. Uh, or, maybe I just don't have it routed correctly. Nope. All right, well, game over on that. Um, give me a second while I play with my audio cables. I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. Fix my audio. Uh, and here's some really bad sounding music on purpose. This is like a I've seen people describe it as a troll, but it's like a fake 8-bit game to, I don't know, as a little bonus or something. You know, if the music weren't so annoying, this would actually be like a cute little homebrew game. The fact that they made something this pointless but cute, like it's just a really nice touch. I don't know, people are like, this game is made by lazy people. Nobody makes a game that's lazy and this is really good looking for a little joke game. So I think you're supposed to like restart it and then the real game comes up. Either that or maybe I have one of the Genesis's that doesn't run correctly on? I don't know. I hope not. That would be a bummer. Or maybe it doesn't like the 32X. Real-time testing. Nope, that was just uh, the trolling game on the first time. Oh, it detects my Sega CD, apparently. Or maybe it just always says Sega CD. I don't know. Turn the sound up here. This is the same kind of stuff written on the back of the box, but equidistant points and all of that. Yeah, this is really cool. I have my whole system like hooked up to a stereo with a subwoofer and everything, so I don't know how well that's coming through on this tiny little microphone. 
This is really good looking. What are people complaining about? I think people just want to be upset. This looks good. Turn it down a little. Let's see what's in the options. Oh, that's cool. You can increase the gain. Oh, that's interesting. So you can switch the uh, audio back to the built-in Yamaha chip rather than the custom one on the cartridge. Expand the screen to V. Oh, okay. So when, if you're using Impel, you can use take advantage of the wider resolution. Baptism of fire naming? We sucks. Disable friendly fire. CPU mate. Okay, I'm going to enable this second. Manage run monitor test routine. What does that do? Huh, neat. So, um, my monitor has an overscan or underscan, I guess. Like I could see more of the screen if need be because it's a professional monitor. But, uh, you know, whatever, close enough. Um, it's kind of right up against the edge on the right here, but I could try and mess with the alignment on my uh, my monitor, but I think it's fine. Scroll test, checkerboard. This is basically like a full test suite. Pretty cool. Huh. Wow. Well, that's neat. Okay, so let's see what this is actually like. Let's start with the arcade mode. Uh, mid difficulty, whatever the default is, is what we'll go with. Three characters to start with. A lot of flashing in this game, so uh, maybe think about that. I guess I'm hitting the use drug button. Nifty. Okay, so we're out of that uh, main entry room and just playing a little bit. Wow, that's actually pretty impressive um, movement of the background tiles and the foreground tiles and stuff. Yeah, I'm really impressed with this. So I'm using a six button Genesis controller with this, which I guess is what you're supposed to do. Oh, this is neat. Look at that. Riding a little robot thingy. And here's their offensive leather daddy stereotype, like uh, Ash in Bare Knuckle 3. Probably not the best taste, but uh, that's what they did. Ray France, I guess. And you can smash this vending machine, that's cool. <laughs> cool. Okay. What is this thing up here? Camera? I like the glowing mohawk thing, that's a good touch. Beat people up with glow sticks. A 
some dash moves like in Streets of Rage 3. Yeah, this guy's almost exactly like Ash from Streets of Rage, or from Bare Knuckle 3, because he's not in the American version. He even does the butt slapping maneuver. Really poor taste, guys. I definitely think that the gameplay is fairly Streets of Ragey, which shouldn't be a shock. Um, there's a lot of the trying to um, crowd control, don't let them encircle you kind of stuff. Oh, that's cool. I don't know what these are. Stole a credit card, apparently. Oh, it's like a trap, I see. Cool. I like the animation. I mean, there's some things that are a little bit stiff, but I mean, it's still a Genesis. Like, it's that's how things are. Like, you only have so much RAM or whatever. I don't think anything looks wrong. Um, it's not quite as good as the animation in Streets of Rage 3, but it's close, and the sprites are a lot bigger, so I'm not complaining. I like this a lot. I think this looks really good. The music is cool, too. So the music is uh, Groove Master 303 and Dread, the guys who did some of the music in the Streets of Rage remake fan project, which was really great. I like it a lot. This stuff is good. This is good. It's also definitely not vaporware. Maybe vapor wave, but it's not vaporware. I wonder how I get the Sega CD second player to show up. Maybe something in the options I didn't do right or something. You know, there's occasional flicker, but not like you would get from a normal Genesis game. It's pretty rare, and there's a lot of sprites on screen at once, and they're all pretty big. Like, this is definitely really pushing the Genesis really hard, even if it does have an accelerator chip in it. Getting run over by the bikes from Akira. Akira! Am I supposed to kick them? Is that what's going on here? Yeah, I'm just really impressed with this. I don't, people on the internet mad about waiting years for it. I mean, have you ever tried to make a video game? Especially if you're not like a pro with a whole studio behind you. It's very difficult and time consuming and I know I'm making a video game. I've already been working on it for two years. This is, I'm not surprised. Um, small indie teens get in over their head, run out of money, like I'm not shocked. This is really impressive. The fact that they completed it at all is impressive. The fact that it's come out this good is fantastic, and I don't know why people are so upset, other than they just want something to be mad about. If you worked on the project and got mistreated by the guy in charge, or you didn't get paid or something, that sucks. Uh, I totally understand why you would be mad, but mismanaging tiny projects, people who are basically amateurs, pretty normal, unfortunately. Like, there needs to be, like, indie game business school. But that doesn't make it a bad game, and I hope everybody did get paid. But I know that their funds were locked up from some PayPal fiasco for a long time, and before you think that that's BS, um, I have friends who have gotten locked out of PayPal, too, and had PayPal just steal their money. Like, it is a real thing. So, um... You know, don't leave money in your PayPal account. The 
This is really good. I am totally into this. I don't know. If this had just come out in 1994 or 95 or whatever, people would be psyched as hell. Does it seem like a game Sega made? No. But does it seem like a third party game from that period? Sure, why not? Uh, but it is really pushing the limits of Genesis, so it would definitely have to be a late period Genesis game. But I mean, it, something like the SVP chip in the Genesis Virtual Racing is what I'm imagining. I don't know what you're supposed to do when you're grabbed. Those grabs look, could look better. Not my favorite animation here. Maybe it's different with the other characters, but for the most part, the art and animation is good. Just not Sega level, but Sega's like top tier. You can't expect people who are not long-standing professional devs to make something that looks as good as the finest works of the, one of the best teams. Um, but that said, this is still great. And the fact that it's running on a Genesis is extremely impressive. I don't know, I'm not playing the hardest mode, I just did whatever the default was. It's definitely not pressing me very much right now, but neither of the first couple levels of, of uh, Streets of Rage 2. Is that a slice of meat dancing around? Sorry, I beat up your ride, Kaneda. Oh. Is that guy wearing roller skates? figure out if there's a back attack like in Streets of Rage 3 or not. I know this is not a popular opinion, but my favorite Streets of Rage game is still Streets of Rage 3, although I'm very impressed by Streets of Rage 4, like don't get me wrong. I, everybody's like, Streets of Rage 2 is the best! I do not actually agree. I mean, I guess it's technically Bare Knuckle 3 that I think is the best, but I mean, I liked Streets of Rage 3 back in the day too. Um, Although I do think that Bare Knuckle 3 is better because of the better difficulty levels and that sort of thing, but oh, these guys are must be bosses because they are hard. Pretty nice. Intercom complete. Mass transit system. Oh look, it's the Toxic Avenger. Crude dudes. Advertising two crude dudes on your platform or on your brawler's a pretty ballsy maneuver. Oh that guy just touched the third rail and got shocked, that's funny. It seems like the throws and the when you get grabbed by somebody are not the greatest, but that's okay, it's not a big deal. Oh, can I take out the support column? Oh man, I always love destructible backgrounds. That's cool. Whoa! Was that a train going by? That was cool. This game is cool. This has a real uh, Turtles Hyperstone Heist kind of feel to it right now. Oh, apparently the uh, mode button does something. It looks like a, a taunt. That's cool. 
don't know what you're supposed to do when they're stunned like that. There must be like a down punch maneuver or something. Oh, there's a block button. Well, that's pretty crazy. What is this, Mortal Kombat? That guy ran away from me. Cool. Yeah, nice. Spray people with the fire extinguisher. Cool. <laughs> Legless booby robots. Okay. This reminds me of the the whip-wielding robots from the Ninja Turtles games. The way that uh, they're kind of hard to hit. Although those aren't flying. Um, or maybe it's like maybe similar to the little fly monsters from uh, Konami's X-Men beat em up. Yeah, this is just like really great presentation, pretty solid fighting. I mean, it's not Streets of Rage 3, but I don't think it needs to be. This is damn impressive. Oh, what the heck? Oh my god, that's amazing! You can ride around on the guy with the roller skates! Oh, this is ridiculous. Oh, I love it. I've definitely never seen anything like this. I mean, I know you can ride the, like, dragon guys in Golden Axe, but I've never ridden a fallen enemy around like that. That's funny. Oh, and now we're fighting a Toxic Avenger. Here we go. Toxie, you're beating my ass. Doesn't seem like I'm actually damaging him. something oh there we go it does seem like the hitboxes are a little bit bigger than they need to be uh, but it's not the end of the world uh, it just like I said it feels like a really impressive effort from a uh, you know a third-party publisher back in the 90s you know, it doesn't seem like it's made by Sega, but it does seem really impressive. Like, this stands up there with, um, you know, some of the, I guess, minor classics of the beat-em-up. I mean, it's, it's definitely uh, pretty impressive. So, 
And people, I think, are coming down on it really hard because they're mad about waiting however many years. But I'm just really impressed. This uh, escalator scene is really cool too. I like the background. This is just really cool. And the music is fantastic. Hey, there's the guy from the commercial. The muscle man. So I think what's going on is when you use the drugs, you have that bar above your life bar that uh, as it goes down, it means you're running out of drug power. grocery shopping and get in the middle of a fight. Yeah, I wear my leather daddy outfit when I go grocery shopping too. Let's go shop at the mall. Oh, that's cool too. I really like the characters coming through the foreground like that. It's a very Turtles in Time kind of thing happening there. Very cool. Oh, there it is. Okay. So when they're down, you're supposed to use the kick on them. I get it. So... Load of characters on the screen at once, and they definitely keep sneaking up behind me. And there's like no slowdown, I'm not even seeing any flicker. This is really impressive, you guys. Oof, that was kind of hard. I mean, these little dudes don't look as nice as the big ones, but that said, this is still really good. This has just been a really great year for beat em ups. Oh, how do I get out of this? It's... Oh, God. This is the part where the beat em up starts getting hard and I start getting my butt kicked because I'm not the greatest in the world. guys remind me of some of the, the sort of dog-like mutant people from Fallout. Boy, if you get them in a stun lock, they're screwed. Oh, what the heck? Kick this? Oh, cool! Oh, that rules. idea they would have cool armor like this. There's so many good little touches in this.
boobs. <laughs> Jeez. Discord beeping in the background there. You know what it is with the hitboxes being the way they are and every once in a while one of the characters is not as animated as nicely? Is it really feels, well, European. It, it feels like like uh, a European developed Mega Drive game, which I guess is exactly what it is. Okay, okay, so here's the guy from the commercial. I guess he's this boss. I think I'm gonna wrap it up after I beat him. Oh, cool! Oh, that rules. Okay, I don't know what I can actually do with this, but. So the drugs thing is not like a desperation move, it's like a power up that lasts for a little while. That's cool. Oh, his name is Showtime, that's why he keeps yelling Showtime, got it. Why is this health bar not going down? What am I missing here? Oh, maybe he's on drugs? <laughs> Game over soon here, I think. It's like on fire, apparently. Oh, I got him. Okay. Whew. His butt sure is hanging out. Okay, well, I think the end of the Beyond Mart is a good place to stop. But uh, yeah, that's it. Paprium is a real thing that is real, and I have it, and it is not vaporware, but it is vapor wave. Okay, thanks. Bye. Okay, uh, it's Jeremy again coming back to you one more time because I figured out the CPU thing. Okay, so I have a second controller plugged in, the uh, second player CPU. Thing is on in the options menu. So I hit start on my primary controller, and then start the game, um, go to, increase it very hard. Okay, so I'll be this guy, and then, okay, um, in the game now, so I'm reaching down and hitting start, on player controller two. And now you see how it says CPU. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it says CPU because that's being controlled by the CPU player, right? Which I guess is the Sega CD. Look down here, whoops. Look down here, I can see the light going on my Sega CD. So apparently it's actually doing something. Uh, player two fighting more competently than Player 2 does in Final Fight 2 or 3 on Super Nintendo. 
Plus, I'm, I think that uh, it's playing a lot better. Like, there's a lot of slowdown on um, Final Fight 2, and especially Final Fight 3. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, the CPU two-player thing actually works. And it, it kind of does make it more fun having someone with you, even if they're a robot and not a real person. So, you know, neat feature. Um, I guess it's just using that... Uh, 68k Motorola CPU in the Sega CD to work the player, but uh, that's cool. So anyway, yeah, that's that's my first look at Pavrium. I'm enjoying it a lot, and I'm, I'm going to be playing it a lot, even if it's you know not uh, a top tier Sega game. It's definitely a, a really nice homebrew game, and. Like I say, I think it's on par with kind of a, a B-tier studio from the 90s, but if they had really good tech. So, you know, I think it's funny they had a reference to two crew, two crew dudes in there because, um, you know, it's that kind of a, a game more so than a, a Streets of Rage necessarily. Like, this is not made by Sega, but that's all right. It doesn't need to be made by Sega. It's made by fans, and it's pretty friggin' impressive for what is really just homebrew software, but... Uh, is this the most impressive Sega Genesis home gear so or homebrew software I've seen? Yeah, I think it is the most impressive Genesis homebrew software I've ever seen. So, you know, maybe people are mad about the length of time it took to get this, or they're mad about the way the hype has been going on, or the uh, shit-talking of the co-founder of the studio or whatever, but I think part of that is because he's French and it's a little bit lost in translation, but, um, you know... This is still a very impressive homebrew project, and making a video game is friggin' difficult. You know, it's no joke. So the fact that you can get a project of this magnitude done, like, that's really impressive. I'm definitely impressed, and I'm perfectly happy with the 80 bucks I spent on this. So that's it, Jeremy out.